All right, from here we're just going to go look at several pairs of compounds and just figure out are they completely different compounds, are they identical, are they constitutional isomers, are they enantiomers, or are they diastereomers. So every one of these relationships is going to be one of these five. Uh, so if we look here, uh, these two compounds both have six carbons, so and they both have a chiral center, so they're chiral, and as you can tell, they're also mirror images of each other. So first off, if you have one chiral center, you're chiral. So to be a meso compound, you've got to have many chiral centers. So in this case, these are chiral and they're mirror images. They therefore must be enantiomers of each other, as the case is here. Cool. In this case, we could have also assigned R and S and figured out that they were in the opposite configurations here. So one, two, three, and this guy's in the S configuration. One, two, three, and this one's in the R configuration. Note the hydrogen is the number four priority, is the dash in both cases. And so in this case, their bond connectivity is the same, but they're not identical. Uh, in this case, having opposite configurations, and again, they're enantiomers. Okay, so now look at the relationship of these two, and you're supposed to notice right off the bat that there's a mirror plane here and that these are mirror images of each other. So, and again, a lot of students just associate mirror image with enantiomers, but keep in mind, for a chiral compound, chiral compounds, them and their mirror image are different. For achiral compounds, them and their mirror image are the same. And so the question really becomes not are these mirror images, but are they mirror images and chiral or mirror images and achiral? And in this case, you might also notice that there's mirror, internal mirror planes of symmetry right here as well. And that makes this an achiral compound. You might also notice that it has chiral centers, and so most more specifically, it is the meso version of an achiral compound. And so in this case, for an achiral compound and its mirror image, they are identical, one and the same. And you look, you might just rotate this around the horn, and you'd find out they're perfectly superimposable. Okay, for the following two compounds here, they're just in presented very differently from each other. And so the first thing I want to do is just verify, do these even, are they even isomers and do they have the same bond connectivity? So on and so forth. So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons is my longest chain here. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons is my longest chain here. If I were going to name this, this would be carbon three. And if I were going to name this, this would be carbon three. And in both cases, we have a methyl attached. So at the very least, these have the same bond connectivity. So they're either going to be identical or they're going to be a form of stereoisomer. And in this case, with there is a chiral center there, but only one. And with only one chiral center, they're not going to be diastereomers then. So in this case, they're either identical or they're enantiomers. And it's hard to see if they're mirror images of each other or if they're identical. The easiest way to probably approach this is just to assign R and S. So if we look at this chiral center here, so this carbon's going to be number one, number two, number three, and there's a hydrogen as a wedge is number four. And so one, two, three, it looks R, but with the hydrogen lowest priority group number four as a wedge, this thing's really going to be S. So if we do the same thing on the other one here, so this is one, two, three, and then a hydrogen not drawn in as number four. And in this case, this looks like it's S. So with the hydrogen, the lowest priority group going to the back, it really is S. And so here they're both in the S configuration, and so these are identical compounds. They're not enantiomers. Okay, the relationship between these two. So in this case, they're presented fairly differently again as well. Um, so first thing we might do is just verify if they're isomers. In this case, we've got a one, two, three, four, five, six carbon chain. In this case, one, two, three, four, five six carbon chain. Uh, if we were to number this, this would be carbon three and this would be carbon four. It'd be numbered the same either way, but bromine gets priority with the alphabet. So again, numbering it to name it. So same thing here, this would be carbon three and this would be carbon four. And so here we've got some sort of three bromo, four chloro hexane in both cases. So they've got the same bond connectivity. So they're not different compounds. They're not constitutional isomers. So in this case, there are two chiral centers, so I can't rule out diastereomers like we did in the last example. They're either going to be identical enantiomers or diastereomers. And again, probably the easiest way to figure that out is just to assign R and S to the chiral centers. Uh, in this case, for this chiral center right here, there's priority one, 
being the bromine, here are the carbon with the chlorines two, and here three. And so that's one, two, three. There's a hydrogen not drawn in in the back. So I'm being in the back with priority number four. This thing is a right-hand turn, which is R. And again, with that lowest priority group in the back, it is R. So if we do the other chiral center here as well, so here are the chlorines number one, the carbon with the bromines number two, and this carbon over here is number three. And again, the hydrogen's in the back. And so a right-handed turn corresponds to R yet again. So in here, notice the backwards nature here. I want to look at carbon three with the bromine here first to match it up with the first one. And again, priority number one, priority number two, priority number three. So, and in this case, it looks like R, but there's a hydrogen on the wedged position right here. And so it's really S. Do the same thing on the other chiral center. Chlorine's number one, carbon with the bromine's number two. This carbon over here is number three. And so one, two, three. But again, there's a hydrogen on the wedge, not drawn in, so at number four. And so this looks like it's S, but it's really going to be R. And so we can see that they have one chiral center in the same configuration, but one chiral center in opposite configurations. And so that these are diastereomers. They're non-superimposable, but not mirror images. So this comparison is a little easier than the last couple we've done here. So we've got a four carbon chain in both cases. Every carbon's got an OH, and the middle one's got H and OH. So from there, the bond connectivity is the same, so they're not different compounds, they're not constitutional isomers. And in this case, we've got two chiral centers. So in this case, these two are in the same configuration, and whether that's R or S, I don't even have to assign. I can just see that all the groups are exactly set up the same. But here, the H and the OH have traded places, so these are gonna be in the opposite configuration. So one configuration the same, one configuration that's opposite, and these are also going to be diastereomers. So I could assign the R and S, but in this case, with a visual inspection, I can avoid it, just seeing that one chiral center is in the same configuration, one's the opposite, so they're diastereomers.